Hello and welcome to part 17 in this tutorial series on programming in C. So for the next couple of videos or so we're going to start looking at functions and I'm going to try and break this up into as short a videos as possible so that they're easier to review at a later date otherwise you'll end up with a 60 minute video talking about a lot of different concepts and it'll be difficult to sift through them all to, to review different parts. In this first part we're going to look at the simplest form of function. The first thing we need to do is ask ourselves what a function is. Well, we've actually, in all of our tutorials, been using a function called main. Now main is unique in the sense that we can only define it once inside our program and it's used as the entry point by the compiler for our program, as you already know. Our, at line 5 here, our program starts executing and this code block defined by these curly brackets here is what is defined as our program. Now, this main function here has its name main. It has here what's called its return type, which is an integer, which means when it's finished executing, it returns an integer value. In this case, we're saying return naught at the end of execution. And because it's the main function, that's the end of our program. And it has here some curly brackets which define the code that's executed when this function is called. So, how do we define our own functions apart from main? Well, it's simple. First, we have to do two things. One is define what's called a prototype, which is the description of the function on one line. And somewhere else in the program, we then define the code block that's executed when that function is called. So let's declare a prototype. And we're going to say our return type is of type void, which means nothing. Then we give it our name, which will be say hello. We're then going to open and close some brackets, and inside here, if there were to be any data, or what are called parameters, supplied to the function, they would be put inside these brackets, which we'll have a look in a later video. But there's nothing for this say hello function. And then we'll end our prototype definition simply with a semicolon. So the compiler is now aware that we have a function defined called say hello. And now below the main function, I'm going to type void, say hello, open and close brackets. But rather than a prototype definition, which we've already done up here on line 3 of the semicolon, on line 27 here, I'm now going to open and close a code block. And this will now contain the code that's executed when this say hello function is called. So I'm going to type printf, I'm just going to copy this and paste and say say hello was called and I'm going to put a couple of new lines in there to separate everything out and I'll put one at the beginning as well and save. So to reiterate at the top here we've got what's called our prototype which is our return type in this case a void nothing the space our name say hello our uh, brackets containing if any data and then a semicolon to end our prototype definition and then down here we've got the actual function description or code which again is our return type our name our arguments or parameters or data if any inside some brackets and then at this time a code block and inside here is the code that will be executed when we call this function and this format here is exactly the same as the way the main function is declared here. This has an integer return type, the name main. It has, in this case, no arguments or parameters and has its corresponding code block which is executed. So if I now compile and run this program, you'll see that we start at main, the entry point. We come to line 7 where we then print that we're in main and we start at main. We then declare our two integers. We then print from main our two integers to the screen. We then store in a new variable added up the sum of those two integers and print that here on line 17, 18 to the screen, which is done here. And then we print our program end, which is done here, and the program has ended. And you'll notice that nowhere have we used the code inside our say hello function, because although we've defined the function, we haven't actually called the function yet. So between these two printfs here, let's now call this function. And the way we do this is simply to type say hello, open close brackets, and a semicolon to end the instruction. 
And if there had been any parameters for this function, we would put them inside these brackets. But as we said in the function description, there aren't any, so that's all we need. And now what will happen in the code is, it'll come to line 17 and 18 and print added up 9, as it has done here. And now what it'll do, it'll see say hello. And it'll know that it needs to jump off, find say hello, and now execute the corresponding code inside the say hello code block. And when this code is finished, it'll then return to say hello here and carry on executing the rest of the code from line 21 onwards. I should also point out, even though we're not returning anything inside this void function here, it's good practice, well in my opinion anyway, you don't need to in a void function to still type return in a semicolon at the bottom so that you know that you're returning at this point from the function. So now if I compile and run this code, you can see that we have, as before, start main, num1, num2, it prints the added up result, but now it's been told to execute the code inside the say hello function, bracket, block, sorry, which it has done, it's printed say hello was called to the screen, and it's now returning, so it's returned line 21 and executed line 22, and the program has ended. So that's all there is to declaring and then calling functions from your code. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video we'll look at some slightly more complicated functions and supplying them with some parameters or arguments or data, however you want to call it. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.